great pleasure to introduce Canon's first full-frame mirrorless camera, the EOS R. In this video today, we're gonna to have a look at some of the features and buttons that this camera offers you. Let's take a look together. First impressions that you're gonna see about this camera is it's kinda of like the old friend you already knew. A lot of the buttons and layout are very much like Canon's other full-frame EOS cameras like the 6D Mark II and 5D Mark IV. Firstly, you'll notice at the top left, a simple on-off function button. When you turn the camera on, you'll hear a click, and that is the protective shutter screen removing away from the sensor to expose the sensor like other mirrorless cameras. Going across the top of the camera, you'll notice the hot shoe placement for other accessories like speed lights, external microphones, GPS modules, and the like. Just to the right of the hot shoe, you'll notice the new backlit LCD screen. You can have a black background with white text, or by holding the light switch button, you can change it to a more traditional white background with black text. Fantastic for shooting in the dark. The light bulb switch here, other than holding down and changing between the two backlit modes, you can also press once to reveal more information traditional to your top LCD screen on other EOS models, such as the AF, the drive mode, the white balance, for example. Again, you can also change the backlit option on this menu. Just to the right of the LCD screen, you'll notice a new mode dial. This mode dial is simply accessed by pushing in on the center and then rotating the outer toggle. You'll see modes familiar such as auto, TV, AV and manual. This model also has bulb mode and three custom function modes which are programmable. Just up the top here, you'll also notice a multi-function button. If we press and hold the multi-function button, we can then change some of the individual settings such as white balance, ISO, drive in a more traditional sense. Just to the right here, you'll notice a locking button. The lock is the same as the lock on other EOS cameras. What it does is it actually disables this rear mode dial from twisting and turning. So if you do have the camera slung over your shoulder and going for a walk, you're not gonna accidentally change your mode. Just to the top, you'll see the red dot. This is a simple start-stop process for recording videos. In front of this, you've got your traditional primary multifunction wheel. At the moment, this camera is set in manual. This is changing my shutter speed. Of course, you'll notice at the apex of the grip, you've got the shutter release button. Half press to autofocus, full press to take a picture. Just exploring down the left-hand side of the camera for the moment. Firstly, at the top, we have a shutter release cable option. This camera uses the RS60 remote control. Just below this, you'll also notice conveniently placed a microphone input and headphone jack. So for those who are doing some video and want to externally record audio, you can both monitor and record out of the camera at the same time. Just behind there, you'll also notice that there is a mini HDMI and USB-C connection. Two new things about the USB-C port is it offers the fastest transfer speed we've ever had out of an EOS camera and it also allows us to charge the battery internally using a USB charger. Looking at the rear of the camera, the first thing you'll notice on the back of the camera is the fully articulated flip screen, allowing us to change the angle of the screen in any direction that we wish, including reversing on itself for the bloggers and people who love selfies. To the top, we have a menu button that will give us the options to change all of the various systems within the camera, changing our quality of image, time, date, and setting up custom functions. Just at the top, you'll notice the electronic viewfinder. This is completely new to the Canon EOS R. 3.6 million pixels in the viewfinder offers the best quality image you can possibly see through an electronic viewfinder. You'll also notice as you put your eye up to the viewfinder, the rear screen will automatically turn off, which will cause less distractions. Just to the left of the viewfinder, we have a traditional diopter for those who have spectacles and would like to change the focus on the electronic viewfinder to their eye. Make sure that you adjust your diopter before using the camera. Another great feature of the new electronic viewfinder, when you're looking through it in a landscape orientation, traditionally all your information such as shutter speed and aperture is isolated at the bottom of the screen. When you flip the camera to a portrait orientation, all this information is repositioned at the bottom of the screen quite conveniently once again. A new button I'm really excited to show you on the back here is the new multi-function touch bar. This is a fantastic new addition. It uses the sense of touch, hold on the left hand side to turn it on, and then we're able to swipe left and right to change things such as autofocus modes. We could change it, customize it to ISO. We could even change shooting styles like one shot or AI servo. Simply touch the bar, 
and swivel left and right. It's also fantastic for viewing photos in playback by allowing you to swipe forwards or backwards up to 10 photos at a time, or with a single press moving forwards and backwards one frame at a time. Another beautiful feature of this touch bar is it's not an actual physical button. So you can actually change settings in the middle of recording a video without having any form of clicking or button pressing noise occurring in your audio track. On the right hand side at the rear, you'll see a lot of familiar buttons here. Playback and trash can, uh, simply to be able to play back your images and of course delete things on the run. Just above this, you'll notice the Q set button, which allows you to then enable the, the multifunction touchscreen on the rear. So if you do want to change some settings and you've forgotten where the button is, you can always hit Q to enable the touchscreen and then make your adjustment on the rear screen. We also have an up, down, left, right uh, joystick. So for navigating menus, it's very simple to move around. Just above here, we also have an info button. This info button allows us to toggle between the rear screen's options. Firstly, we can have a plain image. We can introduce the traditional rear screen uh, that the other EOS models have with all the shooting information. I can press once more to have a live view with shooting information. Again, to change things, I can use the, the wheels and dials at the top, or I can touch the screen and swipe left and right to increase or decrease shutter speed, for example, or increase or decrease aperture. Same goes for ISO. I can simply press on the ISO and swipe left or right to be able to change this quite quickly and efficiently. If I push info one more time, I get a little bit more shooting information, such as what file type I'm in, RAW or JPEG, for example, the white balance, the picture styles, uh, exposure simulation, what drive modes I have on the left-hand side, and metering modes. So a lot more information displayed on the screen. Of course, at the top, I'm still reminded by what mode I am in, how many photos I have left on the card, and how many minutes of record time do I have in the current movie settings that I have. If I press info one more time, this is a great feature a lot of people love. I get a live histogram on the screen. Not only that, I also get an electronic level. So for those who love their landscapes and find it difficult to find the horizon, you can use the electronic level in live view to find your horizon quickly and efficiently. You'll also find at the top right your AF on button, traditional location right next to your thumb, nice and comfortable, an exposure lock button, which can be customized to do other things and also the autofocus point adjustment selection button. Behind the hand grip, you'll notice the memory card door. Push back to open. You'll notice that there is a SD card slot in here. This is compatible with UHS-1 and UHS-2 SD cards, making it very easy and efficient. Close the door, ready to shoot. Just looking at the underside of the camera, you'll find some traditional information such as camera and serial number information. You'll also notice there's a little removable rubber flap here which opens up an accessories port, which is for connecting a battery grip. Of course, you have a traditional tripod mount in line with the camera lens. Just under the grip here, you'll notice the battery door. One of the things that excited me the most when reading about this camera was finding out that it used an LPE6 battery. For those of you who have 6D Mark IIs and 5D Mark IVs, you'll be pleased to know that this battery is completely cross compatible with the new EOS R. Another great reason for having that large battery is it allowed the EOS R to have a really wonderful traditional feel to the grip. I can really truly hold this camera and shoot one handed thanks to a great design and ergonomics. Just having a quick look at the front of the camera, you'll notice that there's a small clear viewport. This here is to indicate an LED light for when you're in self timer mode, which will count down from 10 seconds down to two seconds before taking a frame. It's simply an indicator to people standing in front of the camera when the shot's about to go. Also on the front of the camera, you'll notice two small holes either side of the Canon logo. This is just the internal left and right stereo microphone for video recording. On the left hand side of the camera, just below the R logo, you'll notice a lens release button. Press and hold, turn the lens in an anti-clockwise direction to remove. While we got the lens off, let's have a look inside here. This is Canon's all new RF lens mount. It allows us to make faster optics that are lighter and smaller. Another thing you'll notice about this mount is that there's four additional contact points at the bottom of the lens mount. This allows us to communicate with the lens faster than ever before, making the image stabilizer work faster than ever before. Just while we got the lens off and the camera's turned off, you'll notice that there is a shutter at the rear of the camera which is protecting the sensor whilst changing lenses from any dust entering. When we turn the camera on, that protective layer is removed and we're ready to start shooting. When the camera's off, it will automatically go back into place. 
To mount the lens on the camera, you'll notice that there is a red mark on the lens and on the camera body. Simply align these two and twist on until you hear the click and you're ready to shoot. It's worth noting it's good practice to turn the camera off before removing any lenses or applying new lenses. This allows that protective shutter to fall in front of the sensor and it minimizes your dust absorption. Another thing you'll notice about these new RF lenses is this front multi-control ring. This allows me to change certain settings within the camera. I'm currently in manual mode. I'm holding my camera in a traditional sense. I have my shutter speed right next to my shutter release button and I've chosen to use this ring to adjust my aperture. I also have my ISO at the touch of my thumb using the rear control dial. This camera is truly ergonomic to allowing me to change all three aspects of my exposure without having to take the camera away from my face to find a button. I mentioned before that the front ring was customizable. To change this from aperture to other features, all you need to do is visit the menu, come across to the fourth orange menu, customize dials, scroll down to the front ring, press set, and we have options such as changing the aperture, shutter speed, ISO, exposure compensation, uh, or we can turn it off completely. It's up to you. For me personally and manual, I find having the aperture on the lens makes the most sense. So if you've played in the customized buttons menu a little bit and you kind of got lost and you're not quite sure what happened, you can always reset this. Again, visit the menu, come across into the orange menus, and you'll notice at the bottom of the fourth orange menu, there is a clear customized settings button. This will allow you to reset the camera back to factory defaults and you can start again. Okay, to review photos, on the back here, at the bottom you'll notice a playback button. In playback, we have the option to use our pinch zoom. So we can check focus and navigate around the images with our fingers. We can also use the top multifunction bar to change between the frames. To delete, simply press the trash can, confirm, and it's gone. To come out of playback, we can either hit the play button once again and we're returned to our shooting modes, or alternatively, we can touch the shutter and we're ready to shoot again. One other really good feature about the fully articulated screen is we can actually close it upon itself, protecting that surface. If we're using the electronic viewfinder constantly, and we don't want the rear screen to be exposed, we can close it. Of course, it's as easy as flipping it open, turning it around on itself if we want a more traditional camera feel. So I hope that you've enjoyed the little look at the EOS R that we've done today. And I hope you can get along to a Canon Collective event and experience this body in person because I truly believe you need to hold it, use it and shoot it and you'll love it.